What was the inspiration for the book? I think I would have to say that having done the research on the tour to South America, um, I was I wanted to do more work on the origins of association football in 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 Exeter, and the book gave me an opportunity to do that. Um, there were also other themes in the Brazil book, the last two chapters are on the First World War. So again, it gave me an opportunity to explore more um, what happened uh, um, to the club, to the players during the war. And again, having um, been involved in the project, the St James Park uh, exhibition project, I know that I, you know, I was doing the... Um, the early years, I was doing a piece on the early years and I also did a piece at uh, uh, Times of War. And so I, I did some research for that on the Second World War. So again, the book gave me an opportunity to um, certainly develop our knowledge of what the club went through during the war. And I came up with, for example, the Second World War, I came up with images which I'd never seen before, images of a bulldozer on the, on the big bank in 1945. And uh, even even some volunteers, or there, you can see people in khaki, just in one of the goal in one of the goals in front of the big big bank, and uh, and so I would say that I would say it was a it, it followed on from the work that I did for the um, on, on on the Brazil book, and then of course and it, and it was a it followed on naturally too from it was part of this St James Park uh, exhibition project. Um, and so it was a case of, I think in the original proposal, there were 20 chapters maybe, and I mapped out certain themes. Well, there's 30, you know, 30 chapters. Um, and that was it really, yeah. I think that's interesting, having looked at the book, it's very far reaching. Mm. Um, there's a huge amount of it. And I, sort of, I suppose the question to ask is, what kind of a book is it? It's football? history, local history, architecture plays a feature. Um, what kind of a book would you describe it as? Because it's not just a book about a football stadium, is it? No, I think, I think the land is important. So actually, you know, the subtitle is a clue that land, land of Grecian glory. I think that it, it is, as, as Martin said, uh, it's, it's, it's the history of, of land and how did, how did the club get that land well there was a whole history before the club were even involved and so the book really tells that story the story of the land uh, 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 and yes um, uses that the local community made of that land for example at the end of the first world war there was uh, the children's night in celebration of the armistice being signed 1918 and uh, five to six thousand local children March throughout um, through through the uh, through the city to the ground, and there was a big event with fireworks at the ground. That that's just one example of um, the many examples of how um, the the ground is, I think, a focal point for the local community. And as we know today, it's very much that. Yeah. I think that's interesting when you talk about the the children's walk and the the, the armistice and the fireworks and that kind of thing. Yeah. Was there anything? Um, because there are so many different kinds of stories, was there anything that surprised you when you were researching the book? Surprised me? Um, I think something I'm interested in, one of my interests is, is music. And I really enjoyed the discoveries of, uh, of how music played a part in the history of the ground. So from 1908, there was a, the city had a brass band, the Exeter City Military Band, playing Uncle Tom Cobbley as players ran out. And then people got fed up with that and they were, it was replaced by a, a Devonshire Regiment band. We're talking pre or First World War here. In the 1920s, there was community singing. We know that before games. So the crowd would be singing songs. There was a there was a game when uh, before the uh, um, the cowshed uh, cover went up when uh, it poured with rain at the start and um, the people and 
the crowd in the cow shed um, ironically sang a song to the to the people under cover in the old grandstand uh, before the Sunderland Cup tie in 1931 uh, um, there's a good time coming a beard ever so far away there's, that was a popular tune which you can find on YouTube yeah. so maybe we can have those sounds as part of a part of our exhibition or as part of a, or as a, a point at, in the ground at some point where where supporters can 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 be looking at images and and and, and hear this hear the hear the music so i i wasn't i think that was something that i didn't i didn't look for but something i discovered and as we saw we saw t tonight one of the um, one of the women in the um, in the senior reds pointed out that she's got a connection with the uh, with the conductor of the um, Southern Railway Band who were performing at matches uh, um, after the Second World War. So I, th I think I think that's something that that we could well develop. Yeah, having people uh, giving 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 fans giving visitors um, um, the opportunity to hear some of these sounds from the history, yeah. I certainly like the idea. Um, back to the sort of the written, uh, the written medium. Um, how did you go about researching the book and writing the book? What was the process? Okay, um, so it's, it's true for, for um, maybe my main resource was the Football Express. So from 1906, to 1914, then there was the gap for the war, then it picked up again in 1919 to around about 19, early 1950s. I think there was a period in the late 40s where I didn't manage to, 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 to see this. But I went to the British Library, I saw original copies of, the, of, of, of this newspaper. So I was taking images of, and I, you, you never, You've never got enough time, so you're always, as you know, when you're doing research, you've always you're always looking at your watch and saying, "Look, I've got I've got one hour to do 1921." Well, it's not enough time, but but I'm looking for themes that I think uh, will uh, um, will be readable, which people want to hear about. Um, maybe an incident. Um, I think. I think important. Yeah, it's important to say that it's not a book about really what was going on on the pitch and who scored and the free kicks and that. I think there 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 are two games where we do you do get a sense of what went on the Villa Cup tie nineteen fourteen and the Sunderland game in nineteen thirty one. Where there's well, we do hear a little bit about what's going on on the pitch, but it's not a book about actually what's what's happening between in the ninety minutes. It's about what happens before the game. It's about, for example, when there was a military band. The military band would parade down Sybil Street and arrive at the ground playing. Wow, you know? I mean, imagine being at the ground and being really powerful. You know, there was, there was the mid-1930s when the tally came in and supporters were writing to the local press. Hey, what's happened to the military bands? You know, we've, you know give us back our band. You know, that, that, that sort of thing. So... Um, um, I think as well, maybe, maybe what surprised me, and that's, that's uh, to take up the, 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 the previous question, um, I think in much, uh, uh, there's much about what the, what the club and what the ground is about. There much hasn't, there's a lot that hasn't changed. So from the early 1900s, okay, the, the, the actual the pitch and the levelling, that, that, that has changed. But since 1908, um, you know, we've got the importance of the supporters' club. We've got their desire to have representation on the board. Um, we've, um, yeah, the involvement of the local community as well. Fates, there was a, there was a big fate in 1911-12, um, over three days or something, organised by the supporters' club incredible sports days and that and so these are replicated today maybe in different ways so I think I think um, that that's important to say that so it's very much a book about the people and the life yeah. of the football club and the football ground and I note towards mm. the end of the book there's reference made to some of the 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 heritage work or museum work that's been going Absolutely. on here and uh, how much that was an influence on the later chapters to kind of square the circle in a sense 
I think so. Um, so um, I, I certainly um, a, a feature of of um, certainly the the, um, the last chapter that we call that um, a community club. So it begins with with the Man United game. And um, I think in, a, in that program for the Man United game, I found that there's an article uh, uh, um, on how the ground was being opened up for volunteers coming in after games and cleaning up. And there seemed to be a different atmosphere um, from, from, from that time. And um, I think it's, um, it's, and it's the same with, with, with the heritage. I think people are visiting the club now and seeing what's being done seeing the displays um, out, uh, uh, on, 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 um, at the, on the different parts of the ground, um, the banners. Um, I think this is really important and Alan Banks makes the point in the forward that he, he, he takes his hat off to, um, uh, to the team, uh, the museum team, um, the people that are working on, on the heritage of the club and it's something that he really, he really appreciates and that's significant that this this legend of a player and you know and the guy that everybody 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 loves and respects he's saying that and so that that that's really good. Yeah. It is wonderful. Um, kind of overall thoughts. How would you sell the book to people? Because it, it's not really just a book for Exeter City fans, is it? No, I'd 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 like uh, I'd I'd like to think it, there there is there is wider scope for for making people um, aware of. Um, Perhaps, uh, let's say by by reading it, you maybe people will think of their own grounds or or, the, or other clubs, and well, have we got something similar? Why why don't we have it? Why doesn't someone research what we've got? And you know, did we start as a circus field or uh, was how was how was the land bought? The 17th century. There's, there's, there's a, a noble woman bought the ground and set up a trust. Okay, what is what's all that about? So I think I'd 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 like to think that that, that in in a sense what you're saying maybe is that it's sending a message that um, it's it's not a book where you turn the page and find out what the score is, and it's not about that really. Um, it's um, it's it's about it's about people. It's about the people who use the land, um, and um, of course there are important games, um, but it's about the development as well. And that was how the supporters fought for that development. Um, I think that I think I think um, I think that's an important theme. Um, so yes, I. I um, I, I do think there, there there is something of interest for people outside of outside of Devon. That's, um, people, yeah, as you say, um, hopefully that will happen. Yeah. Excellent. Just a couple of quick questions to round up. We're yes. recording this interview for the Exeter Literary Festival right. 2019, and and more on a personal yes. note for you. What is uh, special to you about books uh, as a researcher and a writer, but, but also as a reader, perhaps? Special about books. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think just 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 learning and and, and um, so learning, being moved, being affected uh, uh, emotionally. Maybe reading, for example, *The Color of Football* by 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 Steve Stacy, and really just just kind of some some of it is jaw dropping. Just just when just when you read what. Some of his descriptions. It's very emotional. You know, that's an example of a book that, that can really move you. One of my favourite books is is uh, is about the Somerset cricketer Harold Gimlet, um, 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 the tortured genius of cricket by by David Foote, One of my one of my favourite favourite writers, and um, that that's yeah. And books can books books inspire. Of course they do. Yeah. That's wonderful. They certainly do, and I, I know I very much look forward to reading yours. Before I do, is there um, before we wrap up, is there anyone in particular you'd like to thank? Um, Absolutely, I'd like to thank yourself for for the involvement with the with the uh, with the, with the illustrations, and, and and that was important. I think it's been a team effort, really. It's not only yourself; it's Gabriella as well. It's Paul Farley, 
Um, somebody who I, I always mention um, is Alison Stiles because we've got two photographs of the ground of the land from the 19, from the 1890s, and she's she discovers she's forever discovering these things, and she's got access to the all these the ancestry websites and and. Um, Whenever I'm doing an article or something, I, I always we always exchange emails. Um, not only that, but I think especially I'd like to thank um, Sarah, Sarah Willis. She managed the project. Um, she did the copy editing, and she also liaised with the publisher um, and Martin Weiler because um, Martin was kind of the shadow really where I was writing and Martin would be not looking over my shoulder I'd be passing stuff on to Martin I said look how's that and Martin really it was his enthusiasm for the project and encouragement um, I mean if he'd taken months to get back from me this book would never have been written but I would write a chapter and invariably two days later Martin would there'd be an email from Martin yeah okay liked it maybe, maybe you could say this or so and I think that that really is important so I think I, I, I'm and I, I'd especially um, I'm extremely grateful to um, to the support of uh, yeah, Sarah Willis and Martin Weiler yeah. Aidan Hamilton thank you very much it's been a pleasure You're welcome yeah. my pleasure well,